morning, every. Oh, no, we're afternoon now. Good afternoon, all. Thank you for coming. My name's Hillary Carter. I lead uh, research at the Linux Foundation, as well as communications function. And it is a pleasure for me to present at Sustainability Con with my colleague Anna Hermanson, who's our um, ecosystem manager at LF Research, to describe some new research that we have kicked off and officially launched. Um, that's specific to sustainability. And we hope that you'll spread the good word, get involved, and um, make our initiatives better. If you're not familiar with LF Research, our mission is to um, investigate open source project communities and um, open hardware, open software, open standards, and open data, and to describe what our communities are doing to help solve the world's most pressing challenges. Uh, and we do so by creating new insights. So if, please familiarize yourself with um, the work that we have published to date at LF Research. Our organization was founded on a history of um, research excellence at the Linux Foundation, illustrated by the 2018 um, uh, uh, Linux kernel history report and the FOSS contributor survey in 2020. Um, we use empirical research methodologies, including um, doing survey work, uh, qualitative interviews, and analyzing data sets to come up with insights and to um, articulate the trends and hope to impact our open source project communities so that they can use this data to better inform how they strategize and activate uh, their communities to uh, address some of the gaps. And today we've published 31 reports. Uh, our deliverables include reports, infographics, uh, blogs, uh, and often we'll do uh, live sessions at events or a webinar. And any survey data or data sets that we have used in research can be found on data.world, which is the QR code uh, in the bottom left of the screen. And the reason we publish our data is just because open data is a core value at the Linux Foundation. And it allows uh, anyone with an interest in uh, the data that we have collected to use that data for their own purposes. Maybe you'll find different conclusions than we did, and we invite you to share your feedback. But feel free to dig into the data that we have been able to generate through any of our efforts to date. Uh, we use a number of frameworks to organize our research, uh, tech horizontals, industry verticals. Uh, we look at issues at the ecosystem level, so that don't neatly fit into a, a given technology or an industry, but are cross-industry projects, things like DEI and, and uh, governance. And sustainability is one of those projects that falls into the ecosystem category. And, then, and we also have more recently launched a geographic framework for analysis where we do regional-based studies. So today we're going to dig into research that's currently underway and a new initiative that's launched called LF Sustainability. And what we set out to do was to identify those projects across the Linux Foundation that are advancing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And so here we are. If you go to lf.org, our homepage, uh, we have a, a new home for where our community can learn more about the UN Sustainable Development Goals and how we are organizing our projects along these, uh, using this framework. Well, what is interesting about LF open source projects is that some project communities were born with sustainability at their core, projects like LF Research or Open Source Climate or the Green Software Foundation. And other project communities advanced the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals serendipitously. Projects like Hyperledger Foundation, the use cases are extraordinarily powerful when it comes to solving sustainability challenges. Um, so for those of you unfamiliar with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, this is a time-bound series of goals to achieve economic progress all around the world while considering critical issues like poverty and clean water and sanitation and good health and quality education and gender equality. There is no economic growth that is meaningful unless we address sustainability in a holistic fashion. And using this framework um, makes sense for us because it is widely adopted among many of Linux Foundation member organizations. It is widely known, it is widely supported. And so it 
moves us to become part of a, a very well-established, very well-recognized uh, initiative. And this um, LF Sustainability is really the hub where our communities can discover those projects that are aligned um, with sustainability in mind. Uh, it is a, also a gateway to a landscape that's currently uh, in development, hosted by LF Energy, uh, which is bigger than open source uh, sustainability projects. It invites contributions. If your project should be part of uh, the energy landscape, please get involved in that capacity. So discover the many, many uh, initiatives that are underway to connect our community and help help organizations discover sustainable projects, help contributors discover sustainable projects, and let's identify some of the gaps so that we can do more work in this important area. So this is an open invitation to you to get involved. Here's the most exciting news of all. All of our technical projects hosted at the Linux Foundation, we have about 850 of them now, each and every one advances SDG 9, which is Industry, Innovation, and Infrastructure. And this is because everything that we do is free, and it is a tool to create innovation using tried and true technologies that are robust and enable cost-effective innovation all over the world. So SDG 9 is the good news story. Here's the other good news story. The UN Global Impact, or I beg your pardon, UN Global Compact reported as early as 2017 that there was an important relationship between open source software and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In fact, they recognize the link between open source and the ability to um, uh, nurture a $2.1 trillion uh, annual revenue in the tech sector alone. So if this is what open source software can do for the tech sector, it can do a whole lot more for other industries as well. So that is the most inspiring finding that our research has identified. SDG 9 is the winner. And so to not overwhelm our research with all of our projects being lumped into SDG 9, we had to make some choices about how we're presenting our findings. And so projects were chosen to be included in SDG 9 that advance the other SDGs, because all of them are involved in SDG 9, but to, to isolate those that could, be, could, be, could not skew our results, those that we have included in SDG 9 advance all the other goals in, in important ways. So here are the research questions that we ask. Does the open source asset help users to make progress toward one or more of the goals? Secondly, does the project itself or its organization by way of its SIGs, um, whether those SIGs are related to sustainability or diversity, equity, and inclusion, or some other activity that it can be linked to the SDGs, are there documented efforts in a project organization that help advance these goals? And so, here we are. This is what uh, our initial finding looks like. That, again, even with the accommodation around SDG 9, which are 323 projects, advance all the other goals, um, you can see that we have a tremendous amount of strength in uh, uh, reduced inequalities, in um, a decent work and economic growth, and uh, things like quality education and uh, responsible production and consumption. The mere fact that code exists in robust form and does not need to be recreated, our ability to reduce waste is in an industrial context supports um, uh, responsible production and consumption where 87 projects have found a home. So I want to very quickly go through just a few highlights by each sustainable development goal, what the goal is, and a few projects that, that help advance that goal. So the first of the SDGs is no poverty. Uh, and three important projects that are advancing this include trust over IP, our call for code for racial justice and fair change, and Open Wallet Foundation. The opportunity to create a digital wallet creates access to 
economic opportunities for people who do not otherwise have an identity and cannot participate in the economy because they can't have a bank account. So the pathway to improving poverty comes with personal empowerment, sometimes through a digital wallet. Goal number two is zero hunger. Projects like AgStack uh, Foundation and Call for Code, uh, Open Harvest was a new project we added in December last year. And of course, open source climate. The third goal, good health and well-being. Uh, we have amazing projects in this area. Uh, ELISA, enabling Linux and safety applications, is doing incredible work keeping people safe in the workplace. Rare Camp, uh, an open source project community connecting people with rare diseases and adva advancing research uh, for diseases where there is no support from, uh, from the healthcare industry. And uh, our consortium, in fact, there's a conference in June uh, uh, which describes the work that this community is doing in a healthcare context. Quality education, I'm extraordinarily happy to see Linux Foundation Research play an important role. Every piece of research that we do is free. Uh, we have many, many uh, free training opportunities through our training and certification program. And of course, mentorship is also a, a, a way that we help advance uh, quality education at the Linux Foundation. Just to dig into SDG a little bit more, the, um, the courseware is the leading um, uh, element in our uh, quality education uh, work. Uh, the tutorials that we offer, the webinars, um, career guidance, case studies, there's a lot of material. All you have to have is a curious mind um, to get involved and to uh, skill up in a meaningful way and create new opportunities for yourself in your career. Gender equality. Uh, I know having co-authored a piece of research on diversity, equity, inclusion, Linux Foundation research could be in here. We've only selected three for this purpose, just to highlight some of the projects. The Chaos Project, you're probably all familiar with the work of Chaos. Um, Open Hardware's Diversity Alliance, Inclusive Naming Initiative. Uh, we will have a comprehensive list of all the projects that um, can be associated by goal, but it's just great to see them here in highlight form. Clean water and sanitation. This is um, unfortunately one of our gaps. We have very few projects uh, advancing water specific SDGs. So clean water and sanitation number six and life below water is SDG 14. Clean water and sanitation involves our, our rivers and lakes and fresh water for drinking, reduced water waste, uh, responsible uh, uh, water consumption and recycling. There's a lot more work that we can do, but we do have existing projects. Interestingly, with LF Energy, you wouldn't necessarily associate an energy-specific project, but operator fabric is specific to utilities. So those utilities need not always be specific to the electric grid. That piece of software is as important for water utilities as it is for electric utilities in reducing waste and improving operational efficiencies in a utilities context. Affordable and clean energy. Great work being done by LF Energy very broadly, probably dominating this category, um, Hyperledger Foundation and, and so on. Goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Um, creating job opportunities for youth, uh, uh, anything that project communities are doing to advance um, opportunities for people in, in under or underserviced parts of our world um, are reflected here. Again, I mentioned previously industry, innovation, infrastructure, 850 projects <laughs> could be listed, um, but that's the best story of all in this research project. So elaborating a little bit more on how our, our communities are advancing SDG um, 9, Zephyr, a real-time operating system, is used in so many applications across SDGs. SDG 3, of course, is good health and well-being. SDG 5, gender equality. Uh, SDG 15, life on land. Through the IoT and our ability to monitor um, uh, animal migration patterns, uh, protect endangered species, 
monitor um, firefighters as they head into danger zones and their vital signs. The work at Zephyr, even though it was not born with sustainability in mind, is one of the most serendipitous stories of, of this research. Um, Zephyr's doing some amazing stuff. Open Collar Foundation, uh, an application monitoring caribou in Lapland, or monitoring bison, um, or helping protect rhinoceros. That's an open JS project, but yeah, Zephyr's um, a really interesting story. A lot of good things taking place. And AgStack, similarly, the infrastructure that is being created in the AgStack Foundation has widespread applications to advance these other goals. Uh, they are built. They're working with open uh, data, AI modeling, and they're able to advance work. I'm going to use Hyperledger as a as an example of a project that enables supply chain efficiencies through better, better data integrity and the ability to uh, identify the provenance of goods. But Hyperledger in combination with AgStack is really powerful because where Hyperledger may not be able to solve all the problems at the land level of where something originates, think about pineapple or think about mangoes. Uh, in pilot projects using Hyperledger, we weren't really able to identify which farmer's field the mangoes came from. When we combine Hyperledger with AgStack, you bet we can. We can get right down to um, the, the actual field boundaries within a private farm and have better certainty about where, where on the farm that problem is. So AgStack's border uh, technologies are, are really advancing um, our other project communities. Moving on to SDG 10, reduced inequalities. So much going on um, across the org. Almost every project has a, has um, committees to advancing um, the the reduction of inequalities in one form or another. Responsible consumption production. I've already uh, hinted at that a little bit. Sim like automotive grade Linux, not having to waste resources or time to um, implement a technology that is widely in use is probably a really great example to overall reduce waste. Climate action, incredible things going on here at the LF. Green Software Foundation, uh, open source climate, and all the work at LF uh, Energy. Again, life below water, we have very low representation. Um, and this is really important. 50% of the oxygen that we breathe is generated in the ocean. It's generated by phytoplankton, which is a life form that lives on the ocean surface. 50%. When I first learned that, I was, my breath was taken away. So if there is no blue, there is no green. And we have to do more to preserve our ocean. It is under a tsunami of threats from chemical spills and high oxygen levels where there should not be. Plastic pollution, rising temperatures killing our reefs, and overfishing. So any projects that can advance life below water and preserve that phytoplankton's ability to generate oxygen for our planet is really important. We have to do a lot more in this uh, to advance this goal. Great work happening uh, with respect to life on land. I guess we're biased, right? We live on land, and so we, that's how we think. We don't think about the things that we cannot see below the sea. but life on land equally under threat, but it, because we live on land, I think we're more inclined to work on preserving life on land first. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. Again, lots of great stuff uh, going on across the LF and beyond, and partnerships with the goals. All of our project communities, our umbrella foundations, CNCF, Hyperledger, Phenos, you name it, by way of association, and uh, creating um, uh, support organizationally, all of our umbrella projects are, serve as a kind of partner uh, to advance the goals because they help organize all of, the, all of the SIGs and provide funding and awareness for their projects and the work that they do. One example um, of an umbrella project to highlight is LF Networking. Um, consolidation of initiatives under an umbrella to mitigate fragmentation and reduce waste is really important. 
being able to find projects uh, quickly that are almost standards uh, is a very helpful tool. The lack of, en of energy um, waste that, that streamlining creates is enabled by our umbrella projects. So this is some exciting stuff. Now I'm going to pass the floor over to Anna Hermanson, and she's going to describe other uh, sustainable research that we've done at the LF. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here. This is my hometown, so it's nice to have everyone here. And it's sunny, which is remarkable for Vancouver, but um, it's a different ballgame in the rain. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about the work that we've done when it comes to sustainability research. As Hillary mentioned earlier today, we run uh, research with industry verticals in mind, technology horizontals across different geographies and also at that ecosystem level. And as she mentioned, this is where the sustainability piece comes in, as sustainability cuts across industries, technologies, geographies, and ultimately requires a multi-stakeholder approach to solving these large issues like climate change. Um, and as we can see at Sustainability Con and generally at this summit, um, open source provides a really useful vantage point to understand how we can better collaborate and interoperate with all these different tools and technologies and people. So um, I'm going to run through four different case studies that we've done in the sustainability area and then um, give a sneak peek into some more research we're doing. So uh, carry on. Um, all right, so this first research was conducted um, just as a disclaimer before the um, Ethereum uh, blockchain was uh, developed into a proof of stake verification process. And so it was really top of mind in this ecosystem to understand uh, what the carbon footprint of NFTs are and, and if there are other technologies that could be used that might actually reduce this large carbon footprint. Um, and so we partnered with Hyperledger and Palm NFT Studio. And we also commissioned Alan Major to run a number of qualitative interviews with carbon um, experts, blockchain innovators, and other community members uh, in this space. And so resulting from that were a number of takeaways. I have four up here on the screen. And importantly, NFTs represent a foundational business model that um, really represent an inflection point for Web3 where we can um, where we have uh, web asset transactions at this level with this amount of trust. And so um, it's not, they're not going anywhere, but um, as we saw with this research and as a lot of us know, the uh, carbon footprint of NFTs, particularly as they're run on the Ethereum blockchain before the proof of stake transition, meant that NFTs are a very high energy intensive, uh, use a very high energy intensive verification process. And so uh, work has been done that, uh, into reconciling the importance of NFTs with their carbon footprint. And um, this research found that you know, beyond the Ethereum fork that happened after the publication, um, there are a lot of other layer two solutions that take away from this energy intensive process and provide a more carbon friendly option for NFTs. Um, ultimately, this is a problem without borders. You know, as we say, this is there's an ecosystem approach to this problem. Uh, we can't rely on miners necessarily to to be accountable for their carbon footprint, and the entire blockchain ecosystem is accountable and must shoulder the responsibility of finding more carbon-friendly ways of um, of verifying NFTs, which which has been um, seen with the Ethereum fork. The second research report that I'll be speaking about is the report that we ran in partnership with LF Energy. Um, we looked at two different case studies on the, their transition to open source uh, initiatives and programs. And um, the idea here was to see what the state of open source in this energy uh, uh, industry is and what are some lessons learned from particularly these two utilities, RTE and Aleander. And so uh, we interviewed uh, stakeholders from these two utilities to get their perspectives on opportunities, challenges, and then we built those into nine lessons learned. I have four here. Um, importantly, it's uh, this, the, the idea of collaborating means finding common problems. Um, a lot of these companies are maybe siloed and yet looking at the same problems and 
ultimately needing similar solutions. And so working together to solve these is really crucial. Uh, second, taking time to set good practices. The, um, the open source communities are, you know, they're, they're less siloed. And so setting up communication channels to, to introduce these different practices with other members of the industry is, is really useful. Third, education, always, always education. Um, educating enterprises and regulators on the economic and efficiency benefits of open source is a really crucial way to build out more innovation in this space as it relates to open source. And finally, um, releasing control. As a collaborator in this space, allowing yourself to re relinquish control over the process and accepting external perspectives as a way to collaborate more effectively um, was a, a third lesson learned from this report. The third report uh, today is the Web3 and Sustainability Report. This was released earlier this year. Uh, Intel sponsored a roundtable event in 2022 that brought together Web3 stakeholders and um, to, to form a discussion around how they define and practice sustainability. And not only how blockchain can be more sustainable, but also how blockchain can help us be uh, more sustainable and reduce our climate impact. And so we commissioned Kirsten Sandberg to turn this discussion into a report that summarizes the key takeaways, particularly is in areas for improvement and investment in this space to be more sustainable. So I have, again, I have four up here as some areas for improvement and innovation. The first one is regulatory clarity and standards development as a way to improve energy calculations and also to increase investment in this space. Another uh, area is the development of public policies that incentivize the reduction of e-waste and also, also creating circular economies to recycle that um, usage. A third is a neutral dashboard that can be used by stakeholders to align incentives and also to confirm recycling practices. Those can be difficult to reconcile. And a final one is the use of heat from mining devices and uh, as a way to heat homes and buildings, again, in a, a more circular economy around recycling heat use. And a sneak peek on our next uh, report that will be published in time for the LF Energy Summit in Paris. This was a report that was, is sponsored by Futureway. And there was a lot of interest in understanding how open source is, um, is found in the microgrids market, what the dynamics are around open source in the space, the challenges and opportunities that influence this adoption. Um, and what kind of what we can do next to, to uh, encourage adoption. And so this was a qualitative report. We partnered with Intentional Futures to run this research. And they, um, they interviewed 17 subject matter experts in the energy sector. And they found that uh, the open source microgrids market is still very nascent. Um, there's a lot that could be developed despite the, um, the momentum that the microgrids market generally is seeing. And um, it does hold a lot of, open source holds a lot of potential to increase access and drive innovation and also build more interoperability into this such a technolo technologically diverse industry. Uh, and ultimately, there should be a focus on collaboration, education, and as, as well as goals alignment to um, encourage greater adoption. And our upcoming reports. So we, again, at the LF Energy Summit, we will be producing a report on the readiness of utilities to transform to clean energy. This was a, a large survey we ran last year. Um, and we are, uh, we're, we are um, producing the results of that now in a report that I, I will be presenting on in Paris, which I'm very excited about. And then second is a detailed summary and um, more kind of nuanced understanding of what Hillary just presented on, which is the, uh, the projects that relate to our sustainable development goals. And um, kind of that, that, that will be a qualitative study that talks to different project leaders to understand what, um, what can be done to further our achievement of these goals. 
And then um, one that's still in the works, but the um, an int uh, report into the interoperability challenges in the energy space and what, what can be done from a regulator perspective, from a utilities perspective, um, and just building out an understanding of how to be more interoperable in the energy sector. So um, thanks very much. Uh, this is kind of a, a call to action to collaborate with us and um, community members. You know, we have this massive undertaking with the SDGs project and um, there's always more that we're learning from from individuals we're already engaging with on this but also um, project members who who um, we don't yet know about in this that as they map to this space so if you'd like to talk to us about uh, being a part of this research we would love to talk to you and of course if you have any research questions we love taking more research questions so um, thanks very much. I'll, I'll be glad to open. How much, how much time do we have left? Do we have time for questions? Five minutes? I do want to say a very special thank you. I'd like to thank Anna for exceptional uh, research work in this area and for uh, helping coordinate um, a gigantic effort in time for today. And my colleagues, uh, Melissa Schmidt and Elena Davis, who uh, have led the production of our, our visuals, our research reports, uh, all of our deliverables uh, that relate to this launch today and the, the deliverables for LF Energy Summit and uh, keeping those research production trains moving. This is a team sport for sure. So thank you to my colleagues, Dan Brown at LF Energy, um, for all the work that you've done and uh, Shilly would be proud. <laughs> Happy to take any questions. And there's a mic. There's a mic at the back. Oh, you've got the extra mic. Okay. If you want to get involved, um, we welcome partnerships, uh, sponsorships, researches. Um, can be a costly undertaking. Uh, Suzanne and VMware have been tremendous sponsors. We've had a sponsorship from Intel uh, and other organizations, Palm NFT Studio. But you know, please keep um, sustainability in mind as a strategic. Um, Sustainability research is a strategic spend. It's a wonderful story, uh, a great narrative to help uh, align your brand with really important work uh, that benefits the planet. So, hi. Thanks for the thanks for the overview. That was that was so helpful and, and inspiring. So, I just a quick comment and then and then a question. Quick comment on number nine. I was just thinking it would be it would be uh, really useful to sort of really dig in and quantify exactly how much open source is added to you know these startups and things rather than rely on the sort of big estimate. I think you, it would come out with a really big number that would get people's attention. So, so the sort of total economic impact of open source I think would be awesome. Thing to study, um, but then, uh, but on the slightly other side, uh, for the education side, I'm a professor, and it just, I, I know it's good that the Linux Foundation has done, you know, 70 courses or something, but it just in the overall universe of education and how closed it all is versus how open it should be. I was just wondering if, you know, maybe, maybe you could, you know, create more of a sense of urgency of trying to get all of education outside of those proprietary silos and into more of the, the open source side. For me, that's just such a huge opportunity that's being missed. So I guess I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, I'll, I'll comment on education. It's a wonderful point that you make. And yes, our, re our research is focused on the work at the Linux Foundation. But the sort of underpinning of the real engine of of sustainable educational opportunities comes from the internet and an open web. And if you think about how the LF projects uh, help run the internet, the work of uh, OpenJS Foundation, the web for me has been my gateway to lifelong learning and to um, self-study in technology. I did not have a tech background. I was 10 years in financial services. And through the internet and keeping the web open and keeping the web running, that's sort of an unheralded activity that we don't directly acknowledge, but it, it relates. And so, yes, there's a pathway to quality education that's much more than open source, but it's how we facilitate those um, uh, education into other fields that I think really matters to, to the planet. So I, I take your point. Thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, there's a question at the back there. Thanks. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you so much for this really interesting um, talk. Um, I think the question that I have that I'm still formulating is, um, f well, for some context, I'm in the CNCF uh, environmental sustainability tag, where we look at cloud native sustainability and energy and carbon reporting and re reductions. Um, but what advice would you have in terms of how to know what activity is the most high impact and what kind of success metric can you compare your efforts against and your communities and the initi initiatives that you're focusing on? And because it's really difficult to know, you know, to have this reflection and retrospection of your activities. So how do you do that? How do you manage that? Uh, one of the questions that we do intend to answer in a more thorough research report is measuring that impact. And there is a framework that was introduced to us, and I wish I had it at the top of my head, from a university professor um, uh, whom I met at World Open Innovation Conference in the Netherlands who, said how, who asked that very question. And there is a framework that we intend to apply, um, but we're limited in our resources to be able to explore 850 open source projects against that framework, but we will uh, do our best to try to measure that impact. And that's really the, the responsibility of LF research broadly, is what is the impact? How much economic value are we creating? Um, how, how are we advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion? So it's an excellent question, and it's extraordinarily difficult to answer, and I'll we'll add. Just as a, as a qualitative researcher, or at least that's what my background is, I think we get really caught up in how do we quantify impact? And there's a lot of different ways to do that, and one of it is through research and through data collection. Um, and I think there's still a lot, a lot to be said for qualitative impact and understanding anecdotally um, across a wide sample, you know, what what is the impact? And so I, I just, I guess that, that would be something that I would, I would want to kind of put forward is there's, there's quantitative ways to, to define impact, you know, how much money has been spent, how many resources are involved, what is the, you know, our, our framework is um, activities, out, output, outcome, impact. And um, so you, you can look at it that way, but I think uh, so incorporating some qualitative perspectives into it is, is useful, so that's my plug for qualitative research. <laughs> I'll add one comment, and for open source broadly, one of our challenges is um, understanding deployment of open source software, that we don't have the full story of that impact. We have download data, but not usage and implementation data, and even less data around where we're really moving the needle. Uh, but we do know that we are foundational to that effort, um, but that's where I'm hoping, you know, <laughs> grant monies and donations and things like that will help us uh, broaden our understanding around impact, for sure. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. Are we at time? Thanks so much, everybody. It's been an honor and a pleasure.